Talking about uh, tomorrow night's match, uh, starting with you, Paul, uh, for a change, since I've got the, the, the two of you. Uh, it's a big night tomorrow against Dundee, live on the BBC. It's one of those big games that everyone at the club wants to be involved in. Yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, fantastic result over the uh, over Dunfermline over the two games, and our reward is to you know two games against Dundee, which starts tomorrow night live on the TV, and it's a, a great occasion for the players. And just once again, it's just really disappointing. The uh, the fans are going to miss out once again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and John, um, we can't talk about the game against Dundee without one more time uh, referencing the display against the pars you know the result the performance and two excellent goals from our strikers uh, louis and gozi yeah the players were magnificent yeah and you know certainly gozi's goal was a great goal and it was a, a great opportunity to go from uh, louis vaughan and uh, i think everybody's heart stopped for a split second while he chipped the ball up to knock it by the goalkeeper uh, so no the, everyone played extremely well really really well uh, we changed things at half time and it can he worked as well, you know. So the players had to re adapt to that, which they did. They took it on board. They went out and they they did it, and we managed to get the, the two 0 victory. So it was uh, yeah, great to see the players celebrating. You know, I can imagine what it'd be like if the fans had been in the stadium and they were involved in that and hyping up the atmosphere. It would have been, uh, you know, one to savour. Yeah. Turning to you again, Paul, um, with the game against Dundee coming up tomorrow, players need to embrace the occasion, but also play their normal game using the skills and attributes that they've applied to do so well already this season. Uh, we've shown that we can compete against any side in the Championship, and indeed any side this season. Yeah, you don't want to get caught up with the occasion. We, we want to play our own game. We've done that all season. And we, you know, we've stressed right from the, the off uh, in pre-season. We wouldn't get too high with a defeat, uh, with a win, or too low with a defeat. So, you know, we've had that all the way through, and I think the boys have done that, and as I say, I'm sure the boys will put on a, you know, a big performance tomorrow, which will be required. And, and John, yourself, you, yesterday you were talking to the, the mainstream press, and the TV, and the radio, um, and, you know, obviously one of their, their obvious questions was about Ian Davidson. Looking at the defence overall, two games with clean sheets, defence is a key aspect of our game, how encouraging is it that uh, Davos seems to be on the mend and, and able to play tomorrow? Yeah, it's looking very positive regarding Ian. He's trained this morning, so we'll see if he's got any effects from that. We, we're obviously not doing an awful lot right now, so you know we uh, we anticipate him starting tomorrow night. Hopefully, he'll get through the 90 minutes. Yeah, it was great to get two clean sheets, back-to-back -back clean sheets, after losing the four goals against uh, Hearts. Um, so a massive confidence boost for it, for everyone in the team, you know, that we, we, we kept the clean sheets, Jamie McDonald and goals, fantastic, uh, Kyle and, and, and Davo and the two, center, two full backs, Reagan and, and Kieran were magnificent, but we've said many, many times, you know, we defend as a team, the whole team, it's not just about the defenders, yes, the goalkeeper and defenders like to clean, take, you know, get clean sheets and they, they talk about the clean sheets as much as the goal scorers talk about scoring the goals, but it's great when the defenders go up the park and get a goal as well. So, yeah, delighted with the clean sheets, delighted with the way we defended, because you've got to work hard, you know, you've got to, you know, if things are right in front of the defence, it gives the defence less to do. And I felt in the second half, that's exactly what happened. The, the, the defence had a, a lot less to do, which was pleasing. Yeah. And turning back to you, Paul, uh, what, uh, I'm, I'm told that one of your key phrases before the game, before the last game, was win your own personal battles. Uh, somebody that did that amongst uh, all the players that featured was Ross Matthews. He played 80 minutes and then 75 minutes against the Pars. Um, I assume he's had no reaction after his injury layoff. And, and what about the battling aspect from everyone? Yeah, I think uh, all credit to Ross. He was out for four or five weeks there and came, I think, sort of two training sessions before the first Dunfermline game and to play 80 minutes in that game and then come back so quickly for the second game in 70 odd minutes is, is fantastic. Uh, shows his, his strength he's got and his, his, the fitness he's, he's worked on during his rehab there. So, and, and just touching on the game from there, yeah, there's, there'll be indiv individual battles all over the all over the pitch, but uh, we, we have to get the ball down and, and pass the ball as, as our normal style. And sticking with you, Paul, obviously the players won their personal battles, but in the dugout, um, you're still showing the signs of uh, the battle scars. Uh, how's the how's the cut up, cut above the eye doing? Yeah, I've been keeping an eye out for David McGunn coming from the back here, but uh, he's not in today, so we, sh we should be okay. No, like, I'm absolutely fine, and, and so is John. Good, good. Uh, no after effects of John headbutting you by accident. <laughs> no, as I say, David McGurn's not here, so we're, we're okay yeah. today. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, John, um, overall, securing a playoff spot is a sign of 
the great progress has been made uh, on the field for Wraith Rovers. Um, does this mean that you're even keener for the new season to start, or are you just thinking about the here and now and the next game against Dundee and the one after that? Of course, because I'm not really sure what league we'll be in if I'm going to be looking forward, you know. So I'm looking at exactly one game at a time. It's all we've done all season. That's what we've got to focus on. Don't get carried away. Don't get looking. I mean, we've got to go and sign players and get guys on pre-contracts. And we've been doing that, you know. Uh, I'm happy and I'm confident that the players have, have done that way will ad adapt to either division, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm comfortable with that. You know, very relaxed about that. We've got to go out and make sure that, uh, you know, we put everything into this game, not hold them back. We've got to put everything we've got into this game, try and get ourselves in an ideal world a lead to take to Dennis Park, which would be, you know, an advantage. You know, their, their home record's very good. Our home record's very good. So we've got to try and make uh, make that count tomorrow night. Yeah. And over to you, Paul Kennett. On a similar sort of vein, um, does, how much does it excite you to be to think that we can add James Keatings, uh, Tom Lyon, Christoph Berra to the existing players that are already signed up for next season? Or, or again, are you not thinking that far ahead? I was just going to say that, just what John touched on there. We're, it's one game at a time. We're, we're not looking for to next season. Yeah, we are scouting players and looking at players, but our, our main aim has to be the, the game tomorrow night. And then once that's out of the way, we'll look forward to Saturday. Well, thanks for that, guys, and good luck for tomorrow night. Thanks, John. Cheers.